Hello everyone. I welcome you all and you know thank you so much for attending this uh, Tech Field Day session. I'm really excited to talk to you about the new solution that we just launched a couple of weeks back called the user defined network solution. I'm Piyush Raj. I'm a product manager in the enterprise wireless team and uh, generally I focus on building the next gen intent based solutions and uh, you know currently I'm focusing on the user defined network solution. In terms of the agenda I have a lot of things to cover and uh, we will talk about the nuts and bolts of the solution so i'll talk a little bit about the user defined network overview uh, what the solution is i'll talk about the network admin flow what a network admin needs to do to enable the solution i'll talk about the end user workflow uh, where the end users can how how they can go and use the uh, solution through the mobile app and what are different things they can do in the mobile app and then finally i'll talk about the visibility and rich insights that you can get about the solution through Cisco DNA Center. So before I talk about that, I think last time when we uh, uh, did the tech field day from the wireless side, we talked about our entire stack. So we have Catalyst 9100 access points and Catalyst 9800. It completes our uh, wireless Catalyst portfolio, which is now purpose built for Wi-Fi 6. We said the entire stack is managed through Cisco DNA Center, which uh, translates the intent and turns it into policies. And then uh, you just heard uh, Daryl talk about the Cisco DNA spaces and how you can digitize your physical space and generate uh, business outcomes uh, once you have the entire stack and it, it is getting managed. We also said the entire stack, if you see, it's built on three key pillars in mind. One is resiliency, second is security, and third is intelligence. And today, I'll talk about the user-defined network solution, which is built on uh, one such pillar, uh, which is security. So the use case that user-defined network solution focuses on is one of a shared network. The shared network, which we commonly see across different, uh, different environments, in different situations, in different uh, customer deployments, for example, for a university, a shared network environment would be of a dorm room where uh, different students are coming to the dorms, they are bringing all their devices into the dorm and they're connecting to the uh, dorms and they are discovering all the devices in the network. Similarly, if we think about senior living facilities or hotels or the long-term care facilities or any multi-dwelling business uh, unit business use cases, which you see, where in a common building, uh, the network is shared across different users and they have these devices which are connecting to the same a uh, common shared network. So today I'll focus on uh, taking an example of a dorm room use case, which is a typical use case where students come, uh, they connect their devices and uh, let's see what the problem they face when they connect these devices. So let's imagine there's a student called Eddie. Uh, he just moved to the dorm. He has with him few devices which, which you will see commonly uh, students taking with them to the dorm rooms like Apple TV, a Wi-Fi printer, game console, wireless speaker, typical devices that students take. And these devices share using uh, different kinds of multi-link uh, local multicast protocols like MDNS, UPnP, and so on. So first thing what the student will do is Eddie will connect his devices to the dorm as a society. Now it could be a PSK, it could be a dot one x depending on what kind of devices uh, Eddie is bringing, he will connect those devices to the uh, DOM SSID. But now, if you see, it's not just Eddie who's connecting to the DOM SSID. There are other users as well, like John and Mary. They are also bringing all the devices with them, and they are all connecting to the same DOM SSID. Now, this is where the problem starts to come in, because now if Eddie wants to discover his Apple TV, what he will see is a list of Apple TVs which have the same name. So you will see Apple TV, Apple TV 1, Apple TV, Apple TV 2, and so on. And this is where the problem starts to come in. Because now he cannot even identify which device is his device, which device is somebody else's device. And if, if we think about for a moment from the end user perspective, it's very simple. Their expectations are you know, very simple. They were at their home. They just you know, joined the university. Uh, they're going to school, uh, they just went to the dorm, they did not even anticipate that this kind of problem will come because they are used to living in their private network in their home where the network is, you know, it belongs to them. So the same expectation 
applies to the end users when they go and you know connect to the shared network environment that can I see only my own devices? I don't care about what other people are bringing or what other people are doing. I just care about my own devices. So can I see only my own devices? Second, can I restrict others from seeing my devices? So you see a security issue here. If I can see other people's devices, other people can also see my devices. So if other people can see my devices and if we don't have a necessary built-in security in these devices, then anybody can uh, come and take control of my devices. So can I restrict others from seeing my devices? And finally, can I control who I want to share my devices with? So if I have a friend, I want to share something with my friend, I should be able to do that. I should not see other people's devices, but I should still have a way to start sharing my devices with my friends. And this is where we are introducing a user-defined network solution. So on the bottom, if you see, once a solution is enabled, this is what the experience looks like for the end users. So Eddie will now be in his own uh, private network segment and Mary will be in her own private network segment they will not see each other's devices. They will only see the devices which belong to their private network segment, even though they are connecting to the same DOM society that they were connecting to earlier. If you look at the key benefits that it offers to network admin is one, it is easy to deploy, but it reduces the day-to-day -day operations of the network admin. What the network admin had to do earlier to onboard the devices for the students, he had to assign, uh, he or she had to assign a dedicated VLAN to bring these private network segment. Instead of that, it, it is very easy to day-to-day -day operations now for the network admin. He, get, he or she gets complete visibility through uh, Cisco DNA Center and you know, Cloud Dashboard that we are building, and I'll show you what it looks like. And then admin can go, admin can restrict the traffic, MDNS, UPNP, even the broadcast packets, even the unicast, uh, if the admin wants to enable, then uh, they can do that and restrict the unicast communication also between the two user-defined networks. May I stop you real quick for a question? Sure. Um, this actually came in from Twitter from Harry Nelson, but I have uh, I, I sympathize with his question. Do we uh, is it required to have a full fabric, uh, the software defined access fabric? I see you have DNA assurance. I assume that's sufficient for identity, but what do you think? No, it does not require uh, to have a fabric to enable the solution. It works in your traditional network environments. Okay. So for the end users. It provides a simple and secure onboarding option of personal devices anywhere they want. You can limit access to your personal devices and then you can you can invite friends to your UDN. And uh, we, I have some you know, demos also to share where we will see how the user is interacting with the app, how they are registering the devices, how the onboarding happens, how they can invite their friends and what that experience looks like. So how does it work? like the solution that we talked about that private network will be enabled, you will have your own private network segment and you know users will be segmented between these private networks. So how does it work? So this is like in a nutshell, this is the solution overview. So different components come together to make the solution possible. So first you need either wave two or Cisco Catalyst access points, uh, you need on-prem uh, or you know virtual 9800 OWLC controller, you need an ICE, uh, you need Cisco DNA Center, and these are some of the on-prem components. And then uh, the, the organization needs to have an identity provider, an IDP. Uh, it could be an Azure AD, it could be an on-prem Active Directory. This is to validate which are the right users which are getting connected to the network and you know, using the solution. And then we have a cloud component called U Cisco UDN Cloud Service, which an admin can use, a tenant admin, what the cloud service does is it enables the students or the end users to register their devices from anywhere they want and anytime they want. What a tenant admin can do is log on to the Cisco UDN cloud service and connect it to the on-prem DNA center and to the uh, identity provider. And then we have a UDN app, which the end users can use to register their endpoints, a very easy way. And I'll show you, you know, what the registration looks like later. And the app is available on App Store and Google Play Store. So once this registration happens, what happens is I registered my devices. So uh, a UDN ID will be generated for me on the cloud and it will be shared across, uh, shared through DNA Center all the way to the ICE. So I registered my endpoints, my UDN ID is generated, now, what will happen is as soon as the users, or let's take an example of students that we were talking about, they will go and connect to the 
SSID in the school's network. They will get a unique UDN ID, which was generated earlier for them during the registration. They will get that assigned. The UDN ID will be available on the controller. And now as their devices start connecting uh, to the network, to this wireless network, they will keep getting the same UDN ID, which the end user got. So I registered my uh, MacBook, I got a UDN ID. I registered my printer, I got the same UDN ID. But since I am the owner for these devices, all my devices have the same UDN ID. And that is where the controller does the magic that it can group the devices which belong to the same UDN ID. And then only these devices will talk to each other and see each other and advertise and announce with each other. So now Eddie will not see Mary's devices and Mary will not see Eddie's devices. Real quick question there. How is the, uh, the UDN cloud service licensed? Good question. Uh, UDN cloud service license comes, there is no separate license for the UDN cloud service. It comes with the existing uh, DNA Premier and DNA Advantage license on which you can enable the solution. So there is no extra charge to use the UDN cloud service or the mobile app. So we saw the solution overview, like in a nutshell, what it looks like. Now we will see what different things an admin can do or an end user can do. So first thing I talked about is the UDN cloud service. Uh, this is what the admin will do. So he will, he or she will go to the cloud portal to establish a secure connection between the cloud and on-prem DNA center. And then if, uh, when, when, when you want to enable the entire solution, then the admin can go to the Cisco DNA center to enable the functionality and I'll, and show you what it looks like. How can an admin go and uh, enable through an easy three or four steps in the DNA center uh, and enable the solution. So this is for the network admin, uh, what they need to do. While if I think about the network user, they need to do very simple things. So one, they just need to go and register their devices through the mobile app. And second, as, as they register the devices, they go and connect to the shared network. Let's say example of a dom room network, they automatically enjoy the benefits of the private network, and they also get the flexibility to invite their friends to their private network. So now first, let us take a look at what the network admin flow looks like. So network admin, as I said, uh, network admin can go to UDN cloud service and connect to the cloud service. Now what it does is when the UDN, when the admin goes to the UDN cloud service, it creates a cloud tenant for them. What that means is, let's say now I have a, a user ID or a school credentials, which I got from my school. Let's say uh, Piyush at the rate cisco.edu. When I go to the mobile app and when I log into the mobile app, UDN cloud service, because uh, admin connected the UDN cloud service to the on-prem DNS center and ICE, whenever I go to the mobile app and log in with my credentials, UDN cloud service will automatically identify using my credentials, what is a domain name and which exactly DNA center and eyes should I match to. So that is what it does. It resolves the domain name uh, as the students go and, and the, as the end users go and log into the mobile app. So one is that. Second is UDN cloud service offers flexibility for the end users and students to register their devices from anywhere. So I could be sitting at my home. I have not even moved to the DOM. I can go and register my devices before I even move to the top. Or I'm sitting in a Starbucks and you know just discussing with my friends, what will I do if, you know, when I go to school, what kind of devices I'm going to take. And I can just, you know, sitting in a Starbucks, I can go and you know register my devices. So this is what the UDN Cloud Service will do. It will enable the off-prem registration for the students of that university. Now, how will an admin go and enable this entire thing and how they will go and configure the UDN cloud service? So there is a new workflow in the Cisco DNA Center in the latest release, so called configure Cisco user-defined network solution. Just click on it, go to the next step. And as you can see, it will list down uh, the different things that you need to do in the workflow. So first thing what you do is configure the cloud service. So as soon as you click on that button, of the configured cloud service, it will cross launch the Cisco UDN cloud service. So you go to the UDN cloud service, you log on with your CCO credentials. Now, when you go to the UDN cloud service, the first thing that you do is you want to connect the UDN cloud service that you went to through your, to your on-prem DNA center. So for that, what you need to do is generate a token. So as soon as you click on the generate new token option, it will generate a token. You, you can click and copy it. 
and paste the token back in the Cisco DNA center. And once you do that, once you click connect, your connection will be validated. And now you can go to the next step. So what this did is it established the connection between the UDN cloud service and the Cisco DNA center, which is sitting on prem. Now, once a connection is generated, the cloud connection is set up. Now, when you go to the next step, what you do is you just need to now select which site you want to enable this UDN uh, solution for, uh, what SSIDs that you need to use uh, to enable the solution. So you just go on the drop down, select the site where you want to enable. There's an additional option in this uh, particular screen that you see is a unicast traffic containment. So what that does is it will not enable the unicast uh, blocking between the two user defined networks automatically. If admin wants to enable the option, they can do that. And then you click next and you come to this screen and it will just show you the configuration summary for you to review if you want to change anything. And once you click configure, it will just update the settings and start configuring all the components that are associated with the solution. So cloud connection was already configured. What this is doing is enabling on the eyes, it is enabling the SSID list on the eyes, it is enabling the authorization profile with making the authorization profile available on the eyes, which is UDN enabled. It is configuring the policy profile, it is configuring the WLAN profiles and tagging uh, the right access points where the UDN needs to be enforced. So what it is doing in a nutshell is it is configuring all the different components which are associated with the solution. Eyes, WLC, APs. And that's it. The UDN uh, setup is done as, it e as easy as you know doing those two or three steps. There are multiple options available in fact to the network admin to configure on the UDN cloud service. One of that is customizing the uh, support email address, phone number, and the portal. So if you open the mobile app, there is a contact us page in the mobile app where if a user is facing any issues, they can go and contact the relevant uh, folks in that uh, university or in that organization. So this is where in the UDN cloud service an admin can go and configure these options. So if you give an email address for the contact support, uh, it will uh, you know enable only it will only show you the email address in the contact us page in the mobile app. If you even give the URL and the phone number, it will show you all those two or three things. So you can customize the mobile app uh, from the cloud. Another thing that you can do is in the customization, you can have your own logo, you can have your own colors, so you can get the look and feel of the app that it belongs to your organization or to your university. So you can set those options in the UDN cloud service and it will show you uh, app as branded for your university. The quick question on, um on the platforms this is supported on you. And I might've missed some of uh, the information, but you've shown wireless. Is this available on uh, wired, uh, on, uh, on wired network gear as well? If for the wired network, if the uh, you're using the APs, which have the RLAN ports, you can definitely connect the wired devices with it. And you know the UDIN can be enabled across wired devices as well. So the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the network user flow, uh, what the registration and the onboarding flow looks like uh, for the end user. So again, let's imagine a student um, who's going to the university, who's going to the dorm room. This is how the onboarding and registration experience will look like once the solution is enabled. So let's say Eddie's leaving for the school, wants to bring iPad, Sono speakers, and you know ring doorbell with him to the dorm. So he will receive an email from the school uh, asking him to uh, you know, download the mobile app and register the devices so he can go to the uh, app store or play store and uh, download the mobile app. He will log into the mobile app with the school credentials that he has. So same email address, same uh, password that he uses you know, to log into different uh, applications in school. He can use the same uh, login credentials and log into the mobile app and start scanning the home network to look for the devices which he wants to bring to the university. And as he selects these devices and registers them, their device, the devices are uh, you know, onboarded for the student ID. So in terms of device onboard, onboarding, there are different options that we give. One of that is you can register your devices right from home. So anywhere you want and anytime you want. 
there are multiple ways of onboarding the devices. So you can scan the home network, you can do a camera scan, you can do an image scan, or if you want to enter the Mac, uh, MAC address manually, you can use that option as well to onboard your device. And I'll show you, I have a, a small demo where I'll show you what these options are and how they work. So now let's take a look at the mobile app and how the registration will look like in the mobile app. So here I have an Android device where I have downloaded the mobile app. So I can go uh, to my apps here, uh, click on the Cisco UDN mobile app and open it. And I can use my uh, school credentials to log into the mobile app. So here I'm using Eddie's credentials. So Eddie uh, at the rate cdnse.com, I click next. It will redirect for the authentication. Now, since I have already uh, logged into the mobile app before, it did not show you that in the back end. What it will do is it will take you to the SSO gateway um, using the Azure. Uh, in this particular case, it will take you to the Azure gateway. It will, uh, you know, ask me for validation. I'll get it validated, and once I land to the uh, app, this is the screen which you know I will see here. So multiple options here. I can add my device, the current device which I'm using, where I've downloaded the mobile app. I can scan the home network, or I can do a manual entry. So let me quickly start and you know uh, start adding my device. So let's say I click the add this device option. Here it's asking me for different device details. I'll enter these details, what kind of device it is, uh, what is the name of the device. So Eddie's uh, you know phone or Eddie's mobile. In this case, uh, I'll click next and then I'll say submit. And that's it. My current device is you know already added. This is how easy it is to onboard the current device that I'm using. So the mobile uh, phone that I'm going to take to the DOM, I can just, you know, it'll automatically detect my MAC addresses and uh, information and, you know, onboard my devices. So that's it. Your one device is already registered. Then I click proceed. Now, as you can see, once I register the device, it will show up in my uh, room. Uh, so I'm seeing the IDs mobile in this case. Then I want to register more devices. So I can now use the scan the network option. Since I'm in my home, I can scan my home network. So I scan my home network. It will continue to scan. It will find out all the devices that you have at your home. I found these bunch of devices that I have at my home. I'll take, let's say, I'm going to take my Chromecast to my DOM. So I'll select that device, click Next. I'll uh, change the device type, it's a streaming device. I can also rename my device. I don't like the name demo.local. I just you know, give it a, a nice name. So ID is Chromecast, click next, submit, and that's it. The device is added. So now I have two devices which I have added to uh, uh, through the mobile app and registered these devices which I'm taking to the DOM. Now if I want to add more devices, then I can use the manual entry option and in this, in this, as I mentioned, there are a couple of options. One, you can use the camera to scan your MAC address. So you can take your camera, point it to the MAC address. It will automatically detect the MAC address in the right format, and you can onboard. Or let's say if you take a picture of the MAC address somewhere else, it's written down, or in a TV, you take a picture, you bring the image up from the gallery, uh, it will automatically detect the MAC address, and you, know, uh, you can register the device. So let's say in this case, I will use the image or the camera scan option. So as you can see, it will detect the MAC address. I'll select the right MAC address, which is, belongs to my device. I'll give uh, you know, the right device type name. So in this case, I've taken a mobile phone. I'll give the right name for the device. So this is my second uh, mobile. So I'll give Eddie's second mobile. And then I click Submit. And that's it. My third mobile or third device is also registered. Now, as you can see, there are options in the mobile app. If I want to edit some of the settings and you know, I want to rename, I want to change the mobile type, I can always go back and you know, do these things in the mobile app. So let's say here I rename from Eddie's mobile uh, phone to Eddie's iPhone. And I click save and that's it. You know, my three devices are registered and they are ready to be part of the UDN when I go and connect to the DOM network now. And if I click on now the hamburger menu that you see on the left-hand side, 
it will show me these three or four uh, different options. So I'll talk about my guest, where we go to the invitation flow and see how we can invite our friends. I showed you the devices uh, tab, where you are seeing all the devices which are part of your room. There's a notifications tab, and I'll talk again more about that, like how that will play a role when we go to the invitation flow. And there are a bunch of settings uh, that you can go to. Uh, like, for example, if you want to contact uh, the support desk, the, you know, the help desk, you can always do that in the settings uh, option. So I come back, I, I go to the guest screen. It will not show me any guest, but uh, I go to the devices and it is showing me the three devices which I have registered. So we saw the registration for the devices and how easy it will be for the end users and the students to register and bring their devices uh, to the DOM network. Now, what exactly happened in the background when I registered these devices? So when I did the registration, what I did was I logged into the mobile app first. So as soon as I logged in, the, the request went to the UDIN cloud service and UDIN cloud service resolved on the basis of the domain that I logged in from, it, it resolved the exact DNA center and the ICE instance that you know it should connect to. So it connected to the relevant instance and it assigned me a unique UDN ID. So in this case, I registered my device. So I was I got a unique UDN number. And as I keep on registering other devices, I will keep on getting the same UDN ID to my devices. And other people who are going to register uh, with their different domain name, different credentials, they will keep getting on their own UDN ID. So as I register my different devices like Apple TV, Chromecast, and phone, I got all the different unique, uh, I got a single unique UDN ID, but my MAC addresses were different for all these different devices. So this is how the registration for the devices happened. Now what if, now what happens when I come to the campus and connect to the DOM SSID? So as I come to the university environment and connect to the DOM SSID, so my registration is already done. So I can directly connect to the DOM network, as soon as I connect to the SSID, the UDN ID which got assigned to me on the uh, when I registered my devices, they will that UDN ID will be available on the controller. Now, different devices uh, which are connected to the same controller, they can be part of the same UDN. So it doesn't matter. Like some headless devices may go and connect on the PSK SSID. I have my you know mobile phone or laptop which can do a dot one X. So they and go they will go and connect to the dot one X SSID. It doesn't matter how they are connecting to the SSID, how they are authenticating, they can still become part of my own user defined network. And then it is supported on open auth and different ways of uh, uh, authentication mechanism. It doesn't matter for us. Uh, you can have your own UDN across these different SSIDs. Now I connected uh, to the network, the shared network. So I got assigned a UDN ID. I connected my other devices. They also got assigned the same UDN ID. So what the controller will do is, as other people are coming to the network, they are coming with their devices, which they have registered or they might register once they come to the network. It doesn't matter. The devices which got the same UDN ID will be grouped together. And now the communication, the all the multi uh, multicast communication, your broadcast packets, the unicast packets will be contained in us in that UDN network or the private network, which is uh, you know per user. And the feature is supported. The solution is supported to the maximum scale of our controller. So in case of 98, it is supported up to 64,000 clients. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the invitation flow. Now we talked about the registration and the onboarding, how easy it will be for the end users to you know, come to the network, to bring their devices to the network and to get the private network experience where they are seeing only their devices, they are not seeing other people's devices. But now you will ask me, hey, what if I want to share something with my friend, how can I do that? So that is where we have the invitation flow where you can invite some trusted users to your private network, your uh, personal group. So what does it mean? So again, like imagine these two students here. One is Eddie, now he is part of his own UDN. So he has all his devices in his UDN. And now there's Mary, another student who has her devices in her UDN. Now they're connecting to the same DOM society. So what Eddie will do is Eddie will send an invitation through the mobile app to Mary. 
And I'll show you in the demo, like what the invitation flow will look like, how the invitation will go, how the devices are moving between two different user-defined networks. But Mary can now accept John's invite or he can reject uh, or she can reject uh, you know, Eddie's invite in this case. So let's say if she decides to accept the, uh, accept the invite, then she has the flexibility to choose whether you want to share all the devices to uh, Eddie or whether you want to show only you know, one or two devices to the uh, Eddie's network. So let's say you select two or three devices. And as soon as you do that, uh, Mary and her devices will become part of Eddie's network. So now Mary can discover Eddie's devices and Eddie can uh, see Mary's devices, which she has uh, decided to share with Eddie. Now let's see a quick demo how the invitation flow will look like in the mobile app. So now in this case, I have two mobile phones. Uh, again, one where I have registered three devices and in the second phone, I have registered two devices. So Eddie, uh, one user and uh, Joe is the second user in the mobile app. So once they are in the DOM network and let me quickly check if I'm connected to the right network or not. So if I go and uh, uh, you know, check my network. As you can see, I'm connected to the UDN PSK and in the second device also is connected to the UDN PSK. So I go to my mobile app. But in fact, uh, before going to the mobile app, let me see if I have a streaming device. So I, let's say I go to the YouTube, I check for the streaming button. As you can see, I have one device where I can stream to, which is my living room TV, which I have uh, registered in the mobile app. And in the second one, if I look at uh, the YouTube again, find the YouTube and go to the YouTube and check for the streaming option. I see a device which the other user has, which is the office TV, which you know uh, he can cast to. So again, I can cast to only one device because I have only that device added to my network and the second user can cast to the second device because he has that device added to the network. Now I can now let's say if I want to share something on the office TV, I want to share with my friend, I'm having a party, I uh, just want to stream something from my phone to the uh, you know, office TV, which my friend has. So what I can do is I can go to the mobile app where I see my three devices. I'll go to the guest tab, the my guest. And this is where I can click on invitation and search for my friend's name. So here I will search for my friend's name it will automatically find out what is the right credentials for my friend. I can select that, click next, and send the invitation. Now, as soon as I send the invitation, the second user will receive an invite on his phone. So as you can see, the invite came through on the mobile app. I'll click on that, go to the mobile app. And in the notifications tab, it will show you this notification. Now, I can accept the notification decline or I can cancel it and accept it for a later time. So let's say I decide to cancel it. going back to the mobile app, I go to the notifications tab, and as you can see, the notification is still there. Now, let's say I accept the invite. Now I can decide which device I want to take to other friends' networks. So let's say I select my Amazon TV, which was the Office TV, which was the original name, but in the mobile app, I have named it as Amazon TV. So I select that device. I say join. And as soon as I do that on the left phone which you will see, it will show you the notification that Joe Snow has accepted the invite and the user will start showing up in my guest list. And on my phone, it will show me that in my room, I have my own device, but the Amazon TV, I have sent it to my friend's device, friend's room. And if I go to the devices tab, then I will see that I have my three devices, but I have an Amazon TV, which is now coming from my friend. So I have that Amazon TV also in my uh, list of devices. So now, if, if you want to edit or if I want to remove the user, I always have the option that I can remove the user, go to the guest tab um, and kick that you know, uh, user out of my room whenever I want. So now let's uh, go to the YouTube and see if I can stream to the uh, Office TV, which I got in my room. So as you can see, now I have two devices where I can see the streaming option. So I had the living room TV, but I can now see the office TV as well. So this device moved to my room and I can start uh, sharing or streaming uh, on my friend's uh, device now. And if I go back and look at the 
uh, let's say the YouTube, where I was earlier seeing my Office TV. If I click on the casting option, as you can see, the device is not part of my room now. So I cannot see uh, the device because it moved to my friend's room. 